right, welcome back. It's Daily Story Questions, Story Comprehension, Friday, April 3rd, 2020. All right, today we're reading a story called Extraordinary Eggs. And at the end, we have a surprise for you. All right, this story is written by Linda Pierce and illustrated by Jennifer Emery. Extraordinary Eggs. We're going to look at the vocabulary words way in the back first. This already has a nice list, so we're just going to use these ones. Tyrant. On page four, it talks about a tyrant. It's a noun. Remember, a noun is a person, place, thing, or animal. Tyrant is a harsh, unjust ruler, like somebody being really bossy, and they don't let anybody else vote. A point, also on page four, it's a verb to name officially. I appoint you Queen Ellery. Do you like that, Ellery? <laughs> okay. I appoint you table manager. Okay. I appoint you, ooh, calendar monitor, okay? Exist, page five is a verb. To exist is to be or to continue to be. Oh, dinosaurs do not exist anymore. They're extinct, they do not exist anymore, okay? They do not continue to be around anymore, okay? Rebel, page six, it's a verb. To resist a ruler's power. To rebel means to not do what the ruler tells you to do, to not do what the master tells you to do. And right now, mommy is the master. At school, teacher's the master. And at home, mommy's the master. Until you're 18 years old, mama's in charge. So, to rebel means to go against the ruler, and then you get in trouble. It's not good. Marvelous. On page 7, that's an adjective. That's a detail word. Marvelous means outstanding, wonderful. And zoom in there a little bit more, Ella. Apathetic is page eight. It's an adjective. Apathetic means not interested. Eh, I'm not interested. Not caring about something. I don't really care about it. I'm not interested. Apathetic. Like, eh, I don't care about it. I'm not interested. Scrawl, page nine. To write in a fast, messy way. Oh, some of you guys do that. Scrawl. To scrawl. Okay, is to write in a fast, messy way. Hey, Mrs. White got a new word now. Experiment, page 10, that's a noun. An experiment is a test used to discover something. You test, okay, it's a test that you use to discover something. So you can test out a theory. You could test out if you think something's going to work a certain way. And we're going to have an experiment at the end of this book. Extraordinary. So there's ordinary. There's the word ordinary. Extraordinary. More than ordinary. It's an adjective, a detail word. Rare, not ordinary, not just normal, extraordinary. Extraordinary. Okay, zoom in on that book, Ella. All right, not ordinary, extraordinary, more than ordinary. Humiliation, page 15, that's a noun. Humiliation is an action or event that hurts someone's pride. They humiliated me, they made fun of me, they were teasing me. It doesn't feel very good. All right, let's start our book. We're not going to echo read today. It's a rather long book, so we're just going to read one time through. That means that you, you need to watch this like two times on YouTube, okay? And if you want to look for the questions, maybe you need to watch it one, two, three times. Ready? One, two, three times. You better do it. I'll be watching you. All right, Extraordinary Eggs. Oh, Mom, I whined. I have homework. I have to give a speech tomorrow. I can't play with Timmy. You can be nice and play with Timmy for just a little while, Mom said. Her voice had that firmness in it. I knew she meant business. They won't be staying long, she assured me. Okay, so she has a speech. That means she has to talk in front of her class and talk about something interesting. Okay, she has to get something ready to talk about it, kind of like a show and tell. And um, sounds like she's having a play date over and she doesn't really want to have a play date. She wants to get ready for her speech. Mom's friend, Mom's friend Jennifer has a little boy who is the biggest troublemaker in the whole world. He gets into mischief everywhere he goes. And when he visits, his favorite place to go is my bedroom. So the girl is the storyteller. She's the storyteller. Take a look at the picture. 
So she's thinking about the other times that he's come to her house. All right. Whenever Jennifer comes over, she lets Timmy loose, and he instantly starts to mess with my stuff. I bet that's happened to you. Eventually, something of mine gets broken. I dread his visits. That means she doesn't want him to come. Why did I always have to be nice to Timmy, the terrible tyrant? There's that word tyrant. That means he's bossy. Timmy, the terrible tyrant. I did not ask for this job. I felt like the appointed jailkeeper. Well, he was... He has to stay out of my room, I told Mom. I could mean business, too. That's fine. Maybe you can take Timmy into the kitchen and make a sandwich for him while I visit with Jennifer. I'll keep an eye on you from the living room. We shouldn't be long. Boy, I had heard that before. She could talk to Jennifer for hours. That's Timmy's mom. Mom was acting as though I didn't matter and that my homework didn't even exist. A little fuzzy today, huh? It's a little blurry today. Back up a little bit. Right there. There we go. I promise we won't be long, Sierra, Mom said reassuringly, like it's okay. As soon as they leave, I'll brainstorm with you and help come up with ideas for your speech. I'll be your audience, too. You could practice giving your speech to me. And brainstorm means come up with ideas. Well, it sure is blurry. Okay, I'll play with Timmy, but if he goes near my room, I will rebel and turn him back over to his mom. I had my limits of what I would take from Timmy, the terrible tyrant. That sounds fair enough, said Mom, giving me a kiss on the forehead. Thanks, honey. I went into the kitchen and got out the bread, peanut butter, grape jelly, a plate, and a butter knife. And zoom again. Hey, Timmy, I said when he walked into the kitchen, you can have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, but that's all I'm going to make for you. That would be marvelous, he said, drawing out the word. Where did you learn such a big word? I half smiled and shook my head. It's like a halfway smile. I'm big. I go to school now, Timmy said proudly, stretching himself up to his full height. So he's stretching himself up nice and tall there. I'm in kindergarten. I can write my whole name, he said. Want to see? I really don't care one way or the other as long as he stays away from my room, I thought to myself as I spread jelly on the bread. I felt so apathetic, like she didn't care. Maybe writing his name would keep him busy and away from my things. But then I glanced at Timmy. He looked so eager to show me how he could write his name that I just had to say yes. Timothy Michael Greenfield. Timmy excitedly took out a fat pencil, just like we use, and a piece of wrinkled paper from his backpack. Hey, sounds like the paper's in your backpack sometimes, huh? He worked long and hard while I finished his sandwich and got him a glass of milk. He was grinning from ear to ear when he handed the wrinkled paper to me. Timothy Michael Greenfield. I could actually read the big, irregular letters he had scrawled across the page. That's great, I told him. I do science at my school, too, Timmy said as he picked up his sandwich. I did a real egg experiment instead of experiment, egg experiment. Don't you mean experiment? I asked, chucklingly. Chuckling. I mean, she's laughing. No, he said seriously. I use real eggs. Oh, yeah? Now I was curious. What did you do with the eggs? First, I have to ask you a science experiment question. Do you think an egg can float? Sure, I said. They seem light enough for me. They seemed light enough to me. I'll show you my experiment and you'll see. Give me an egg and a glass of water. Timothy, Timmy bounded off his chair to help. That means he jumped off his chair to help. I filled a tall glass with water and I got an egg from the carton in the refrigerator. Well, what do you know? I said as I watched the egg sink to the bottom of the glass. Well, huh, what do you know? 
I can make it float, Timmy said. I just need some salt. And, oh, yeah, a spoon, too. He added two spoonfuls of salt and carefully stirred the water. I peered through the cloudy water. I finally spied the egg. I mean, she saw it with her eyes. I just can't get it focused today. It's a little bit blurry still, huh? Look at that. Whoa. So, here's what it was first. And there's how it is at last. Let's find out what happens in the middle. It's still on the bottom, I told him. Just wait and see, Timmy said as he added two more spoonfuls of salt. He stirred a little more, and together we watched as the egg slowly rose to the top of the water. Now that is egg extraordinary instead of extraordinary. Egg extraordinary, Timmy said, beaming, smiling. Beaming means a big smile. You mean extraordinary, I laughed. Yes, it is. Time to go, kiddo, Timmy's mom called. Thank you, Sierra, for the sandwich. Thank you for the sandwich, Timmy hollered as he scampered out of the kitchen. You're welcome, I said. Then I quickly added, thanks for showing me your, your egg, extraordinary egg experiment. It was fun. I meant that, too. Maybe I could use this idea for my speech. The other kids in my class probably do not know about the saltwater trick. I could hardly wait to show Timmy's experiment, egg experiment, to my class. First, I need to try it out, Mom. At first, I need to try it out on Mom, I thought. Remember, I would go back and read. That's what you do, too. Go back and fix your mistakes. You guys are pretty good about that. I carefully poured out the salt water, catching the egg just in time. So what's all this about eggs and experiments? Mom asked as she came into the kitchen. First, I have to ask you a science egg experiment question. She laughed as I told her about my afternoon with Timmy. Who would, who would have thought that a kindergartner would come up with something that was interesting to a third grader? I think that's the picture from the front cover. Do you notice the one the front cover is in the shape of an egg? I only noticed that right now. I didn't notice that earlier. I won't tell my class where I got the idea. That would be the, that would be the most major humiliation of all humiliations. Like she would be embarrassed to say that she's in third grade and she learned it from a kindergartner. However, I will tell Timmy I used his experiment in a third grade class. He will love that. Maybe Timmy wasn't such a terrible tyrant anymore. I actually had a good time with him. You know, he really is a pretty extraordinary little kid. I may even consider playing with him again, but only if his mom is in the next room. The end. And that's the end of the ooh, extraordinary eggs. Look at the little ending here. The last thing Sierra wants to do is play with Timmy. However, she is about to have an extraordinary day. All right, let's look at the story questions. What is the story mostly all about? The story is all about a girl having a play date and a speech. So she has a play date and she has to get ready for a speech and it's all on the same day. Okay, back it up. Okay. Where does the story take place? It takes place at her house. Who are the characters? The characters are Sierra, Mom, Jennifer, and Timmy. What happened in the beginning? Sierra's mom made her have a play date, but Sierra was worried that Timmy would make a mess. What happened in the middle? Sierra made Timmy a peanut butter and jelly sandwich in the kitchen, PB and J. Ask your parents to show you how to do that. If you want to see it a little bit bigger, this is how we did it. Maybe um, kind of do it on the side here. Line down, backwards, number three, instead of three going this way, go backwards three, and then line coming down. That means and. Isn't that weird? That's a symbol that means and. So P, B, and J. P for peanut butter, P for peanut, B for butter, and jelly. J for jelly, peanut butter and jelly. P, B, and J sandwich. Sierra made Timmy a P, B, and J sandwich in the kitchen. What happened in the end? Timmy gave Sierra a great idea for her speech. Oh, Mrs. White forgot the period. What was the story? Was the story fiction or nonfiction? The story is fiction. Did you enjoy the story? Yes, I did. Why? It was interesting to learn about the egg trick. 
Look at this, guys. Look, look, look. Why did the author write this story? To entertain me, to teach me, or to change my opinion? There's two. Two! I've never seen it choose two. It's either one or the other. One or the other. Why are there two? Well, there's two because the author wrote this book for fun, but I also learned something new. Aha! Now I get it. Can you find rhyming words? Yes, but all I could find was I and my. That's all I could find. All right, so screenshot this. So go ahead and pause your screen if you need to copy this down. Pause the screen on YouTube. Go ahead and pause. And flip to the back page. And pause the screen if you need to. All right, Ella, you ready for our experiment? Yep. I think we can do it. <laughs> Maybe. Do you remember in the story, was it was it two spoonfuls of salt or four? Four. I think it was four because mm -hmm. it said two and then it said two more, right? Yes. So let's go back in the book and find it. And you're supposed to go back in the story and listen to the story again to find the answers to your questions. Let's see. Do, 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 two. He added two. He added two spoonfuls of salt and carefully stirred the water. He added two more spoonfuls of salt. Boys and girls, what's two plus two? Four. Good. All right. Let's see if we can do this. We have salt. We have water. And we have Miss Ella backing up a little bit. Put that egg in there. I thought it would be kind of cool to do eggs since we're getting close to Easter. Okay, boys and girls, what happened to the egg? Did the egg float or did it sink? It sunk. It did not float. Now, how many spoonfuls of salt? Four. All right, here we go. One, two, three, four. Ella, you want to drink the water? Yeah. Salty water doesn't taste very good. When you have a sore throat, warm salt water, not to drink it, but to gargle, and then you spit it out, it's very good for your throat, but we don't swallow salt water. Are you ready to try it now? Think it's gonna float? Yeah, I think it's gonna float. Let's let the water stop spinning. Calm down, water. No, we don't want to put it in when it's spinning. All right, come on, come on, is it gonna work? Oh, you have to you have to put two and then add two more, like when you're done. Let's see. Right. Let's see if it floats. Let's see if it starts floating. Can you get in there, Alice? Can you see it? Boy, in the picture, they sure made it look like sound like it was. That's trying to. It's trying. Right here, you can probably see it, like. Exactly what the book said. Maybe you stir it more. Can you stir it more? Is it even trying to flow? I think you should add more. Okay. Come on, little guy. Float. Float, little guy. It's trying. Think it needs more? Yeah, I think it needs more.
Come on. Yeah, it's trying to flip it. It's up. trying to. It's trying to. It wants to float. It says, I want to float. Let me float. I wonder if I didn't mix it good enough. Do you think I didn't mix it good enough? I think you mixed it good enough. Try again. Can you place it in like on the side, maybe? Sideways, on maybe? the side. Come on, float. Ah, oh, it's not. Float, 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 float. Woohoo! It's floating. It's not touching anything. Okay, it's really just swirling around in circles because the water's still moving. But come on, buddy. Come on, little egg. I wonder if this is why it has weird. I wonder if I have weird water in my house. Come on, buddy. Well, we tried. Let's see if you can do it at home.